In the previous video, we spoke about the downfall of FTX and how their former CEO Sam Bankman-Fried, or SBF, was recently arrested in the Bahamas. Today, we'll talk more about the ongoing case and the current events surrounding the controversy. Interested to hear more? Stay tuned until the end of this video to get all the details and begin to know of what is happening in the crypto space. Let's get started! After being charged by the U.S. government with, quote, one of the biggest financial frauds in U.S. history, unquote, SBF appeared before a judge in the Bahamas, where his lawyers petitioned his release on bail of $250,000. However, he was then denied bail. SBF said that he will fight extradition to the U.S. Chief Magistrate of the case in the Bahamas, Joy Ann Ferguson Pratt, denied his petition to be released on bail as he imposes a great flight risk. Ferguson Pratt ordered that SBF be held at Fox Hill Prison until the 8th of February, which is when his extradition hearing is set to take place. Bankman Freed's local attorney, Jerome Roberts, was unable to successfully argue his case in which he argued that the lack of jurisdiction and that Bankman Freed is a permanent resident of the Bahamas, according to the Nassau Guardian. Bahamian media has previously been inquisitive whether the FTX founder is a permanent resident. It was reported that Bankman Freed's parents were present, and at one point in time, police escorted one of SBF's family members to his residence in Albany to get his medication. So far, SBF is being charged with eight criminal charges in the U.S., including wire fraud, money laundering, and conspiracy to defraud. There are also civil charges filed against him, including misleading investors who put more than $1 billion into the company. Government officials have also accused him of violating campaign finance laws. The U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York, Damian Williams, stated that the elaborate fraud scheme SBF set up and is accused of is among the largest in U.S. history. Welcome to 6-0 Crypto, where you get your daily dose of knowledge for crypto. If you want to get the latest news on the cryptocurrency market, then smash that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to stay updated. Aside from defrauding customers, business partners, and investors, Williams mentioned that SBF had used tens of millions in ill-gotten gains for illegal campaign contributions to the Democrats and Republican parties. Quote, All this dirty money was used in service of Bankman Freed's desire to buy bipartisan influence and impact the direction of public policy in Washington, end quote, Williams said. According to an article by The Verge, the court's decision to deny bail follows a marathon hearing in the House Financial Services Committee where lawmakers questioned current FDX CEO John J. Bray III over the exchange's collapse. Before his arrest, SBF was slated to testify before lawmakers as well. In remarks obtained by the Wall Street Journal, SBF was prepared to apologize for the implosion but also placed partial blame on Ray and rival cryptocurrency exchange Binance. The arrest of Sam Bankman-Fried is welcome news, but it still does not get to the bottom of what happened at FTX and why it happened and who else may be responsible. Incoming Financial Services Chair Patrick McHenry, a Republican in Texas, said in his opening statement for the trial. In the U.S., SBF has chosen defense lawyer Mark Cohen. Cohen is best known for having represented Ghislaine Maxwell during her trial, as well as Mexican cartel boss Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. Ryan Pinder, the Bahamas Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, said in a statement following the arrest that the arrest followed receipt of formal notification from the United States that it has filed criminal charges against SBF and is likely to request his extradition. Prime Minister of the Bahamas, Philip Davis, said in a statement that his country and the United States have shared interest in holding accountable all individuals associated with FTX who may have betrayed the public trust and broken the law. Davis also said that the Bahamas will continue in its own regulatory and criminal investigations into the collapse of FTX with the continued cooperation of its law enforcement and regulatory partners in the United States and elsewhere. In an article for the Washington Post, they quoted Brendan Quigley. What you're seeing is a belt and suspenders approach. Brendan is a partner at international law firm Baker Botts. 
The Southern District of New York is seeing all the ways a crypto executive might fight back and building that into their charges. Quigley previously served as an assistant U.S. attorney in the Southern District, where he had taken part in several securities fraud cases. The Washington Post article also states, Regulators have been divided on whether crypto is a commodity or a security. By charging Bankman Freed with fraud in both areas, Quigley said, the prosecution sidesteps the question. And filing separate counts for lenders and customers reduces the odds of defense lawyers muddling who actually was hurt by FTX, which can be hard to determine with so much money coming in and out. The Justice Department's complaint even added a campaign finance fraud conspiracy charge to include alleged Federal Election Commission victims in Washington. The article also states, Under the U.S.-Bahamas Extradition Treaty, defendants can be tried only on charges filed at the time of extradition. Defense lawyers could argue that any charges added later should be thrown out because it would mean the extradition took place under false pretenses. They may not get another chance, Quigley said, so they did as much as they could now. The extradition process can take a year or longer, said David Haas, a U.S. lawyer who has defended people facing extradition. Usually, people don't want to sit in a jail overseas. That tends to be a major factor in whether someone challenges extradition. A Reuters article on the trial stated, Like most extradition treaties, the U.S.-Bahamas agreement requires alleged offenses to be considered crimes in both countries. Bankman Freed is unlikely to convince the Bahamian court that securities fraud and wire fraud he stands accused of are not illegal in the Bahamas, attorney said. Bahamian law generally reflects American law in these matters, said white-collar criminal defense attorney Jack Sharman. I wouldn't expect differences in the law to be a big extradition problem. We're all caught up with the current proceedings as of now, but what do you think had happened with the extradition case and what other news do you think will come out of the FTX downfall? Disclaimer Nothing in this video constitutes professional and or financial advice. The sole objective of every piece of content on this channel is to promote discussion and sharing of information. Do your own independent research or consult a qualified financial advisor before making any decisions based on the information provided. This video is not sponsored. Thank you for dropping by. Let us know what you thought about this video in the comments. What other type of content would you like to see? Like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and ring the notification bell to stay updated for whenever we post new content. For now, This has been 6-0 Crypto. Thanks for joining us, and we hope to see you in the next video.